ourselves alone, that we serve. Welcome back. My guest is Michael Buckley, Intake Coordinator for Dynamic Youth Center. And welcome to the show. How you doing, Bob? Good. Um, uh, tell us, what is the mission of Dynamic Youth Center? To help young people change their lives and become drug-free. And um, how hard is that to do? Well, it's a, it's a tremendous task. I mean, we, you know, we, fortunately, we have a long-term, you know, treatment program, so we have a lot of time, you know, to really, you know, work with them. And, you know, when you get them when you're young, you know, they don't have the same level of responsibility. They don't have a mortgage that they're walking away from. They don't have a wife and a kid that they're walking away from. You know, they, you can afford the time to send them away long enough so that you can, you know, really give them a chance to change and address all the, you know, behaviors that come along with, having a drug problem. And how long are you talking about? Uh, uh, the residence is one year, followed by up to two years of outpatient aftercare. So, uh, you know, a little bit at a time, you know, gradual step-down kind of process. So, um, the, what's the, um, I mean, is it accurate to ask for a success rate? Or? Um, I don't really have the, I mean, the do, numbers for that. I, mean, I don't need exactly, just like the most people make it or the most not or because well, I, I isn't it trying to like change your arm I mean it, it becomes part of you right well, I, I can mean, tell you if you have a, a longer time in treatment and a stronger foundation that you can build in a longer period mm -hmm. of time you certainly you know increase your chances of long-term term success um, you know somebody who goes away for maybe you know 30 days you know they have a 30-day head start as opposed to someone that goes away for a year you know they have a year out of the environment you know off of all the drugs you know changing all those behaviors that they needed to so they certainly have a, you know a, a bigger head start than somebody who you know had something very short -term. right and that would um, give your system and your body a chance to really get used to the feeling and sure um, now tell us how you originally um, got involved with Dynamite Youth Center? Uh, well, um, even though now I'm the intake counselor, I was actually a, a client in the program uh, going in in 1998 and uh, graduating in 2001. And, uh, Congratulations. Actually, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I had actually come for a, a serious heroin problem, a problem with, uh, with heroin. And, um, you know, they, uh, you know, Dynamite taught me how to live a drug-free life. And, you know, now I don't have something I have to take every day. And, you know, I don't have to worry about that kind of a lifestyle. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a miracle, you know, the work that gets done in this place. Well, that's great. And you're also a great role model. You know, when, uh, when you're counseling someone, they won't say, well, you don't know what it's like, you know. And, yeah. um, so you've actually, you know, you're living, walking proof of the success of the program. Sure, sure. And, and this, the... Uh, you know, but it can be done. You give them hope. It, it definitely can be done. But, you know, I, I tried a lot of different things, you know, when I was younger. And as a young person who had no responsibility, um, you know, when I tried, uh, you know, certain other types of treatment, like, you know, methadone treatment. And, you know, nowadays they have a, a drug called buprenorphine, which they give as a, you know, a, for, to somebody who is on heroin, you know, prevents withdrawal symptoms. And, you know, uh, now they use it as a maintenance drug where they give it to someone every day. You know, uh, my experience was with methadone, and, and for me it wasn't a positive one, even though, you know, I know it does work for many people. But as a young person who was using drugs for such a short amount of time, um, you know, drug-free was such a better choice because I hadn't been doing it so long that I couldn't, you know, become drug-free for the rest of my life. And, you know, part of the problem with, uh, you know, taking a, a maintenance medication for me was that, you know, I was still taking other drugs as well. I wasn't really learning how to be drug-free. I was taking something which helped me not take heroin, but it didn't keep me from taking other things, you know. Right. Uh, you know. And what are the maintenance drugs supposed to be doing? Well, you know, in, in theory, I mean, you know, drugs like buprenorphine, I certainly respect as, as a detox and, you know, people, uh, you know, it's, it's given to them to help ease their physical withdrawal, the physical pain that happens when you're coming off of, you know, an opiate-based drug, heroin, or, you know, maybe Vicodin or Percocet, you know, things with Oxycontin, um, you know, it does help ease those withdrawal symptoms and if you're you know given over a short period of time and kind of cycled off of it it eases you off comfortably and you're able to you know move forward with your treatment uh, for some people as a maintenance drug they take it every day um, and stay on it for you know an unlimited amount of time really 
um, and if they were to try to take an opiate-based drug while they were on it, it would block the effects of it. Um, but, you know, being that these medications are also derived from opiates, they also all are also physically uh, addictive. You know, the, the, you know, obviously the behavior isn't there, it's not the same, you're getting it from a doctor, but you are technically, you know, physically dependent on, on another medication. Now, it's probably not a problem for any child in any school, um, tell me, you know, tell me your opinion on this. Sure. If they wanted to get drugs from somebody somewhere, right? I mean, Absolutely not. I mean, uh, on, on a personal level, I came from a, a very prominent high school, very, very good high school, good family, you know, great background and everything. Um, every, the last thing that you would expect, uh, you know, for someone who ended up with such a serious drug problem. Well, but, not uh, necessarily, because usually, prom you know, it means you can afford it more. In a way, but, you know, when a lot of people, when they, they think of, you know, the stereotype of a heroin addict, you know, you think of, you know, somebody, you know, hanging out on the street corner, you know, nodding off and everything. You don't think of a guy, uh, you know, that goes to a, you know, prominent Catholic high school in Brooklyn, uh, you know, with a good family background, with, you know, everything going for him, or, you know, so it seemed anyway. Uh, but it was very easily easy to get, you know, curiosity, you know, parents, people, you know, talk to you about drugs, but, you know, uh, nothing really prepares you for it. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you can try to educate your kids as much as you can, and I, I certainly encourage parents to do that. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, kids, teenagers, they really look up to their friends. And, you know, you see your friends doing something that appears to be fun, and it doesn't immediately appear that there's anything wrong with it. You know, you don't see the immediate damage. Um, you know, a lot of it's long-term damage, and, you know, it can be very enticing. And I'm without sure they're encouraging you to try it, you know. Of that course. Peer pressure and... And it's not even that they're trying to be lousy about it or, you know, be mean or anything. They, as far as they're concerned, it's the same thing as if they saw a movie that they really love. They don't see anything wrong with it, so they want to share it with you. And, uh, you know, if you have a little bit of an education, and, you know, may maybe you'll make the right decision. But, you know, the more information that you have, the better. And I think parents, a lot of times, kind of, they're afraid to touch the subject. You know, they don't want to introduce it themselves. You know, meanwhile, a lot of them got started with stuff they found around the house. You know, medications, prescription drugs, Xanax, uh, you know, painkillers, sleeping pills, things like that. Now, um, I've heard about Xanax. What, what, what is it? Is it is it a prescription? Or? It's an anti-anxiety medication. Uh, you know, for people, uh, <coughs> you know, me. for short-term treatment of anxiety. But uh, you know, kids are. It, it's it's tremendous the amount of kids that are abusing it these days that come into our program. Um, you know, it's definitely gotten up there with cocaine and heroin. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, they take it and, uh, you know, it's um, almost as if they're really, really drunk, you know, really, you know, just out of control. They black out most of the time. They don't remember what they did throughout the course of the night, which, of course, poses a tremendous danger to, to a young lady, oh, um, sure. you know, who maybe took some and had a couple of drinks with some guys maybe she didn't know so well. And uh, besides that, there also is a physical addiction that can come with it, which the withdrawal is actually a little bit worse than heroin withdrawal. I mean, you could actually die. Um, you know, we've had kids that came into the program that had seizures from withdrawal from Xanax. I mean, it's... Uh, oh, so even um, the wrong treatment getting off it is bad. Right. Well, there's, there's a misconception that because something's pharmaceutical, that, uh, that means it's safe. And that's mm -hmm. a street, you know, misconception that a lot of kids pass, you know, amongst one another. Now, help educate us on, on heroin. What are the different ways to, to, to you can you snort it, smoke it, what, inject it? What, uh... Well, in, in more recent times, I mean, it's, it, the street heroin has gotten so much more pure that, you know, you are able to simply sniff it up your nose, which, you know, can also, you know, the, the misconception that it's not as addictive and, you know, less of a chance to overdose. I mean, that's certainly the stuff that was fed to me. Compared to what, though? Uh, compared to if you're injecting it. Oh, okay. You know, oh, if you sniff it, you know, it'll take a real long time for you to get hooked so it's safe. Or if you sniff it, you really can't overdose on it from sniffing it. You know, these are, this is the information that, you know, was given to me by my peers. And, of course, you know, you want to believe your peers, you know. And, you know, mm -hmm. I took them for their word and, you know, found out that that's not entirely accurate. You know, the, the physical dependence builds. And then, you know, you eventually get to a point where you can't afford to sniff it anymore. So you have to start injecting it just to make it through the day. What, what do you mean afford, are you financially afford? Yeah, no? I mean, to give you a, a quick picture of, you know, what it can turn into, you know, uh, my heroin habit started at, you know, maybe about, I don't know, about maybe $5 a day, and within, you know, several months was up to about $200 a day, uh, you know, sniffing it. 
And then, um, you know, of course, you, you have your good friends that, you know, always want to look out for you and, you know, want to help you. So one of my friends that wanted to help me taught me how to shoot so I could save money and not spend $200 a day. It's just more effective. Huh? It just goes right in, you know, right into your system. So you need a lot less of it. But, of course, you know, what ends up happening within a very short amount of time, your tolerance builds back up and you end up in the same place that you were, except now with a much worse and much more life-threatening habit, you know. Now, somebody had told me once, uh, they used the term chasing the dragon. Mm. It's like they, you've always tried to, you take more and more, and you keep trying to get the high that you first had the first time. Sure. And you can never catch it. Uh, sure. Is that, you, that any validity? Well, that, uh, of course. I mean, and, and it doesn't, I, I think people waste that expression just using it on drugs like heroin and cocaine. I mean, that's something that even happens with, with something as, as, you know, as simple as marijuana. I mean, when a kid first starts smoking marijuana, he's attracted to, you know, the idea that he smokes and, you know, he'll laugh for, you know, two hours straight and not even know what he's laughing about. And that's, that's what's enticing to it. But even with marijuana, you know, there are some physical changes that happen after some time and it doesn't affect you the same way. And, you know, you never can quite, you know, achieve the level that you reached in the very beginning, um, no matter how, how hard you try. So you never really get there again, and that's kind of how marijuana ends up serving as a gateway drug because, you know, you want to get that excitement that back that you had in the beginning, and you're not getting it back, so, you know, what's your option? You know, now you're starting to meet other people that do other kinds of drugs, you know, because most people who do other drugs started with, you know, marijuana, so now you're getting introduced to other things, and you're craving that new excitement again, so then maybe you try something next. You know, you try a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you get that excitement again. And then when you wear that out, you go to the next thing. And then eventually you just end up at a point where you're at one of the drugs like heroin, cocaine, you know, things like so that. So what do you advise for parents? Um, I advise them to, uh, to educate their kids. Don't be afraid to talk to their kids about, you know, drug abuse. Um, you know, they can, of course, if they ever have any concerns about their own kids, they're welcome to call us anytime. You know, we, we do meet with parents that, you know, have some concerns uh, about their kids and we'll speak to their kids and, you know, pull them in and, you know, see if we can get anywhere with them, get some information and uh, refer them to appropriate services, even if we're not it, you know, so. Now, a year in the, pro what about schooling? They get regular uh, Department of Education school. It's, okay. They're tested when they get in there. So it's uh, kind of community then. You really, you, yeah, they, we, they live in there? It's boarding? And they live there that. at the program. We uh, built a schoolhouse on the facility many years ago, and the Department of Education sends the teachers, and, you know, they, they actually get regular Department of Ed school on the property. Well, how do people contact you to find out more information about the program or maybe they need help or questions or? Yeah, they can just give us a call at 718-376-7923 uh, or they can email us at dycintake at aol.com and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions that they might have or concerns. Oh, terrific. Well, Michael, I thank you very much for being on the program. Thank um, you. I appreciate you giving us, um, you know, the, uh, the personal insight that really, uh, you know, brings it to home about how um, it is very hard. It's very, it's very easy to fall into it. It's very hard to get out of it and how it can be done successfully. So congratulations again. Uh, thank you very much. That's terrific. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, we hope this is uh, useful to you in many ways, and we hope you have a good, safe week. Yeah, yeah, yeah.